Hi everyone! In the last video, we learned how to construct frequency and relative frequency distribution tables. In this video, we're going to use this table to construct a special graph that's called histogram. And there are two types of histograms. There are frequency histogram and relative frequency histogram. And they look very similar, but the one that we're going to practice constructing is going to be frequency histogram. We start constructing this graph by setting up the horizontal and the vertical axis. The horizontal axis will always be related to our data set. And the way we're going to label the horizontal axis is by taking the lower class limits of the classes and placing them along this number line. So here is my table. And that's where I see the lower class limits. So these are the numbers I'm going to place on the horizontal axis. And the rule is that when I place numbers on the number line, they should be evenly spaced out and they should increase by the same amount. Well, with the lower class limits, we know that it's exactly how, how it will work because we use the class width to come up with the lower class limits, right? So the difference here is always 5. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay, perfect. Now, these are the lower class limits. Now, why do we only need to place lower class limits on the number line and not the upper class limits? Because as you look at the lower class limits, you can easily identify the upper class limits. If this place is labeled as 35 on the number line, I don't really need to show that before that I have a number 34.9. I know that anyway. Another important thing that we need to remember is that when we label a number line in statistics, all those numbers always have certain meaning. And that's why we always have to write units. Otherwise, someone who looks at this graph may not even understand what it's all about. And for every histogram, units will be different. So what are those numbers when we look at the table? Well, remember that the data set that we were given represents average household income. For different states and those values are in thousands of dollars while well, these are the units and when we look at the classes and the class limits well they're also thousands of dollars so these are the units that we have to place along the horizontal axis now let's move on to the vertical number line the vertical axis or the vertical number line will always correspond to the frequency if we're constructing frequency histogram or relative frequency if we're constructing relative frequency histogram. So in our case, this vertical axis should contain numbers corresponding to the frequencies. And these are the frequencies in this case, 88432. But I need to keep in mind, as we already said, that when I label um, a number line, numbers should be spaced out evenly and increased by the same amount. So I cannot simply put 2, 3, 4, 8, right? Because those numbers don't increase by the same amount. So in this case, I just need to decide for myself what would be the best way to label that number line. Well, I can see that the lowest frequency is 2 and the highest is 8. So I definitely need to have numbers from 2 to 8, maybe a little bit below that and a little bit above that. And how I'm going to increase, again, it's also up to me. Um, so I think what I'll do, I will, well, start at zero. So I'll assume that this is zero. And then I'll increase by two. So it's two, four, six, eight in this matter. I could easily increase by one. That would be also fine. Um, so you got the idea, right? Just choose whatever you feel like convenient for you as far as labeling. However, space out numbers evenly and increase the labels by the same amount. And as we already said, each axis has to be labeled. So here we have thousands of dollars. These are the numbers along the horizontal axis. And what are those numbers? Well, there are frequencies. And that's exactly how we're going to label the vertical axis frequency. So once you set up each axis, it's time to construct the histogram itself. So a histogram consists of the vertical bars that have same width, and that width is exactly the class width. So the bars will fit in between 
the lower class limits. And the height of each bar corresponds to the frequency. So if I take the first class, let me go back to the table. So I can see that the first class from 30 to 34.9 has frequency 8. That means that I'm going to construct vertical bar. It's like a rectangle. Basically between 30 and 35 that has height 8 units in this manner. And now I'm going to move on to the next class. Its frequency is also 8. Okay, so it means that I'll have another bar like that. Now the third class. The third class has frequency 4. Okay, so this is how histogram looks like. And in histogram, bars always touch. And this is due to the fact that each bar represents a certain class, and we already said that when one class ends, next class starts. So one of the reasons why histograms are so useful is because they can um, display the shape of the distribution. So we can clearly see that this histogram has a certain shape, and we can even like describe it, right? We can see that the tallest bars are on the left, and then bars are getting smaller and smaller, as numbers on the horizontal axis increase. And we can actually put this all into perspective. What are those numbers along the horizontal axis? Well, there are thousands of dollars representing average household income for different states. So what can we say? How can we um, interpret this picture? Well, we can say that there are more states, right? Remember frequencies, how many? So there are more states based on this picture. There are more states that have average household income on the lower end. And there are less states that have average household income um, on like on a higher end. And that's pretty much why this histogram, this, this graph has this kind of shape. And we're going to learn about shapes in the future videos and in general some other important features of the distribution that can be observed um, on the histogram. Well, there is one more thing that I need to add to this histogram to say that it's it looks perfect and that is title so every graph has to be titled because keep in mind that the goal is to have graphs in particular histograms as informative as possible so without having a title here if someone looks at this picture they would have no idea what's going on those thousands of dollars can represent anything so i need to add the title okay so i simply put average household income to describe what this histogram is about title and I also made another note that don't forget to write units and finally a few words about what if we had to construct relative frequency histogram so I take my table relative frequency histogram would be based on the relative frequencies well guess what that histogram would not look much different in fact from far away it will look exactly the same and as you look closer the only difference you're going to notice is that the vertical axis is not labeled as frequency but relative frequency and therefore you know you'll see different numbers remember how relative frequencies come either in terms of decimals and all those decimals will always be less than one or percentages and you can use either one of those two forms to represent relative frequency so that's how the vertical axis will be labeled but again the shape of the histogram will be exactly the same or should stay the same